now I am really um, kind of passionate, if you can be, about the envelope cause. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's interview. I'm here with Lainey from Design by Lainey. Welcome, Lainey. And Hi, everyone. <laughs> some of you might recognize Lainey because she's been on here before, or if you have taken part in Show Me Your Drills before, you might have seen some of the lefty videos done by Lainey on there for us. Um, but happy to have her back today, and she's going to be going through a lesson on how to address envelopes for us, which is really exciting because that question comes up all the time, and people seem to be really overwhelmed by it. So she's going to break that down for us. And so, Lainey, for people who might not have seen the other interviews or know who you are, can you give us a little rundown? Yeah, so hi, I'm Lainey. I started out as a calligrapher, have moved into doing a lot of um, invitation and stationary design, um, as well as some, you know, creative business coaching as well. So just um, started out doing a ton, a ton of envelopes. And now I am really um, kind of passionate, if you can be, about the envelope cause. So um, I'm a big fan of uh, making envelopes a little bit more exciting and not ignoring them as part of the whole stationary suite. So I know most of you are calligraphers. Um, so we'll talk about, you know, just some tips and tricks of how to uh, make your envelopes unique and exciting. Awesome. Well, yeah. So I, I had done that poll on Instagram that was like, would you prefer a, a boring envelope with a beautiful card or a beautiful card with a boring envelope? And it actually yeah. ended up being like a lot of, uh, a lot of split split decisions. Um, mm. But I vote for beautiful envelope, boring card. And <laughs> I don't know, maybe that's an unpopular opinion, but I think it's awesome. And I love watching your hashtag no more boring envelopes uh, on Instagram yeah. because like some of them are so creative and I would just love to get, <laughs> Lainey, I would love to get one of those in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, well, but yeah, I think, yeah. Awesome. So I think that we should just jump right into your lesson um, because I know people are going to be eager to learn about all of this. So I will get my face off here and we can just get going. Okay, great. And I'll get my face off here too because that's not what you guys want to see. All right. Hi, everyone. So I've got um, some samples here that I'm going to kind of be working with to show you different styles. Um, a lot of these are from our No More Boring Envelopes Challenge, which you can check out on Instagram via the hashtag uh, no more boring envelopes. And so you'll see some of these are kind of, some of these are printed like this little cutie here for the RSVP envelope. Um, but we are gonna mostly be talking about calligraphy today, but here's just some examples of different styles you can do um, with like printed addresses and then calligraphy names. And then here are a few that are all calligraphy um, and I mostly do dip pen calligraphy but of course you can always use brush pens for this as well. So the first thing that um, you'll kind of need to do is know the rules of what you need to do to make sure they mail appropriately. So I am in the U.S. Um, some of you may not be but just check out your local um, post office regulations to figure this out. So one thing that you'll need to do is make sure you leave room for stamps on the top. Um, so if I'm using any kind of like vintage stamps or anything, I typically plan that out. And what you can do is just um, cut this size out of a piece of paper and put it on top of each envelope so you know you have room for that. So that's a really easy trick that I like to do. And in the US actually stamps can go anywhere on the entire envelope as long as it's um, towards the right side and towards the top. So you can really put stamps um, anywhere, this is a good example. This is actually perfectly mailable um, if we had enough postage on it, of course. <laughs> um, so they don't have to go right against the edge. So if you want to design something where your stamps can go in a unique position, that's completely fine. I know on RSVP envelopes, um, I've been seeing a lot of people putting the stamps kind of in the middle, which is a really fun way to do it. Uh, so that's one of the things you'll need to know. And then also you just want to have enough contrast so that the envelopes can actually be mailed. So you don't wanna put anything that's too light. You wouldn't wanna do a really light gray on here. You wanna make sure that if you do a dark 
envelope, then you have, um, like if you were to use this envelope, you wanna make sure you have like white or black or something that's gonna show up. You wouldn't wanna do, for instance, this gray color on this green envelope. Um, so black, grays, whites on dark colors are always good ways to go. And in the US, the machines have trouble reading red. So we try to avoid red at all times. But as you can see, something like this with um, purple would be completely fine. So legibility is another concern. Um, I'm sure if you're all modern calligraphers, you've had at least someone say that you have a hard time reading your calligraphy. I get that all the time from like my dad. Uh, he's always like, what does that say, Lainey? But um, one thing, if you're worried about that, which honestly is not usually a big deal, but if you are worried about that, you can do something like this where the names are in calligraphy and the rest of the information that will be used for delivery is in um, a print font or something like this where you actually print it out. We also love um, this kind of layout where we have something like kindly deliver to or please deliver to, and then all the information is actually in a print uh, font or you could do it by hand as well. Um, so those are just a few things before you start to take into consideration. Um, I have found that my calligraphy is perfectly fine to get there. Um, most of the things that are really, really important, you want to have the zip code as big as possible. Um, so we always put that on a separate line, a little bit bigger. And we want to write as large as possible as well when we're using calligraphy. So you see these names are significantly bigger than the print font down here. Um, so before we get started, um, just want to address a few things about your uh, list. And basically, all invitations are going to have um, up to five or six lines. We usually don't go further than six lines, but six is pretty rare. Um, six usually is when, if they have like a child and an apartment number or country or something like that. So we usually design our guides or plan things out. Um, for five lines. So right now I'm using the um, I'm using this tool which is called a slider writer and it's really cool. Move this over so you can see. Um, it's got this little laser that shoots a line across here so you can write everything on a perfectly straight line. Um, they no longer make this particular tool anymore but you can kind of make your own with a clipboard that you would maybe number the different uh, the different measurement markings and a laser level. I know Becca uses these all the time. Um, this Black and Decker one is the one that I use, but really any brand is fine. <laughs> um, you would just kind of set this up, and sometimes, like if you don't have it with a clipboard, I'll just draw out where the envelope goes and each line, and then set this up so that we've got a straight line across there. And then you can either move, I know some people prefer to move the paper for each line, and some people, I prefer to move the laser for each line. And um, so that's kind of the tools we're using and how you set everything up. Um, you'll want to keep everything consistent on your list if you're doing a large job of envelopes. So for instance, if you um, are using abbreviations for Gates, or if you're doing like RD period instead of road, you'll want to do that throughout. Um, if you're using titles, you'll want to use that throughout. So these, um, most of mine don't use titles um, when I'm doing samples like this because it just gives me more space to spread out the calligraphy. And we do have a data merge tutorial on YouTube that I'll link below for you on our channel. Um, and that'll tell you how to set up your list for calligraphy. And then the last thing before we get started, I promise we'll get started doing this in a second, um, is just that you want to plan from the bottom up. So if you have, if you know you want to plan for five lines, you want to put your zip code in there first for where that should go, and then work up from there. And most of your uh, addresses will only be four lines, but some of them will be five. So we kind of talked about um, setting that up. So if you like what I like to do is go through and circle every address that is five or six lines so that I know to kind of pay attention to those. And when I get to them, I'll start um, a little bit higher up for the name. All right, so you guys ready to address them all below? So fun. I'm just using 
This is um, Dusty Rose color. And I just either clip it in place or if you're using um, a guide like this, you can just center it with all your, um, all your little markings there. So I like to clip it in place so that it doesn't move. And I am left-handed, so the slider writer is set up with the um, slider on the right, but you can, it's very easy to remove it. You just, um, if you're right-handed, you would have the clipboard on the other side and the slider would be on the left for you. And I'm gonna use, in the interest of contrast, on this dusty rose, I'm gonna use white ink. This is uh, Dr. Martin's bleed proof white. It is my absolute favorite ink of all time. And I'm going to use, like I said, I usually use dip pen calligraphy, so I'm going to use, um, this is just a speedball straight holder. Um, in my lefty video, I talked about how left-handed people prefer straight holders. And then this is the brow uh, steno nib, the steno, which is sometimes also called the brow blue pumpkin. And I got a brand new one for you guys, so it might take a sec to get it uh, worked up. So one thing that I do like to do um, to help center, so I know that's a question I get a lot. Um, I have gotten to a point where I can visualize um, the center of the addresses a good bit. So that's not, uh, so I kind of, you'll get better at it as you go. You'll get better at kind of visualizing where that goes. But before that happens, um, what you can do is put a piece of washi tape, which I'm gonna grab in a second. You can put a piece of washi tape um, where you want to mark your envelope on the left or right so that that gives you a horizontal place to put them. They're always going to be in the same spot vertically on here. And then there's actually a kind of new version of this called um, the laser square, which is sold at Michael's. And it actually has two lasers. It has one at the top and one on the side. Um, but if you don't have that, you can either use washi tape or even use your actual laser level to um, mark the middle. So what I would do is kind of measure here. Um, these are A7 plus envelopes, so they're a little bit bigger than seven and a half inches. Um, so we're gonna be somewhere around three and three quarters. So I might put a little washi tape right here just to mark the middle, and sometimes I put it um, down at the bottom as well. So really the biggest thing about doing envelopes correctly is just setting up for each job. And so if you only do mostly A7 envelopes, which is what I mostly do, um, you'll kind of have a lot of these markings already set up on here. This is a slightly bigger size that we're gonna be using, so you gotta set up new markings, um, but typically, these guys over here are set to mark um, my A7 envelopes correctly. So I actually leave those there um, because I use them all the time. So we'll go ahead and get started. I'm gonna continue to use uh, this spacing for these envelopes. Um, so I'll just go ahead and start writing. Another tip for um, centering your addresses is when you put your list together, I always print them out um, exactly as they're going to be shown. I don't print out a spreadsheet. I print out the uh, list of them all perfectly formatted. And so what that does for me is shows where things start. So if I do um, Mr. and Mrs. So then I can see on the next line where, on my sheet, where the address will start. So if it's a really long address, it may start, you know, a little bit to the left of the M. So I know I'm going to have to start over here. Or if it's a shorter address, maybe it starts kind of like right under the plus sign here. So I know that that's where I'll need to start in order to 
get this centered correctly. And all of my fake addresses live somewhere with the word like rose or petunia. I have so many fake addresses that live on petunia. So see, because I started that over here, that I saw that on my list, it centers it up pretty well. And if you're worried at all about centering, um, one thing that I have done in the past is I would just write the street name here and not put the um, the letters here, or sorry, the numbers, so that later on, you know, if this comes kind of over here, then I mark in my head where the numbers need to come to, and you can kind of adjust the spacing in those a little bit more because they're not connected like the rest of your calligraphy, you have a little bit of um, adjustment there that you can do. And flourishes are also going to be your best friend. So if you, um, you know, if you want to create something where you don't use your flourishes quite yet, and that way, if you need to, you can, um, so I can see that these kind of centered up okay, but if I needed to add a little bit more space, I could do that on either end. So I wouldn't necessarily do that on both ends here, um, but if it just had ended up centering a little bit off, I'll show you that on a, I'll do that more purposely <laughs> on the next envelope. And then the zip codes, you can actually mark, because all zip codes are gonna be the same number of letters, um, depending on what country you're in, of course that might change. Uh, ours are five here in the States, so I actually like to, um, I actually start with the middle one, so I'll do that, and then I do the two outside ones, and then I go back and fill in the middle so that everything is pretty evenly spaced across the envelope. So if you're, I think in Canada, maybe you have six letters or in a lot of countries you have six so you would space that out a little bit differently but um in the u.s you use these so we did leave a little bit of space at the bottom which is good we have plenty of space for stamps here which is another um great thing that we did here and this guy looks pretty good these flourishes are a little bit off um like i said i wouldn't necessarily do that uh, but then i'll show you a couple different style here. Okay, so this is kind of our most popular style here, which is all calligraphy. Um, you can see we did that on here as well, but I'll show you um, a couple of different styles as well. This is probably our second most commonly requested, which is where the names are in calligraphy pretty big, and then the rest is in print. And this is, um, I kind of like to say that legibility is not really an issue for the most part, but some people still get a little worried about it. So if your client is really concerned about legibility, this is a safer way to go. And I think it's fun to be able to really highlight the names and really get a ton of space up here to play with. So um, I'll show you this style here. What's great about this style is that there's not so much entering. So these guys, are going to be centered a little bit in relation to each other but since you're writing them in print um, if you just print them out like that it's really really easy to tell where they go and then it kind of doesn't matter where on the envelope they go they don't have to really be centered from side to side here so we'll start um, i don't even use the laser level for these because you can kind of eyeball what goes up here they don't really have to be on a straight line they don't really have to be centered there's really not a lot of rules at all So I'll start here, use some familiar names. And I even love to do these guys on an angle, just to make it kind of fun. And you have so much space, you can flourish, you can do whatever you want. This is definitely a less formal style. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily do this for like a black tie gala wedding. But as long as your client is okay with the formality of it, I think it's really fun. And then you would want to draw new guidelines. I actually put this paper here because when I write in print, 
um, my size, the size of my letter is approximately um, this line size. So I like to use these to line it up. And that's another thing you can do. Um, some folks like to use what's called a light box. And you would use, you would make a guideline like this. You can um, use a marker or a dark pen to draw out all your guidelines. Some people like to also do the diagonal calligraphy lines if they're doing uh, more regimented calligraphy as well. And then you put that under the envelope and then the light box is basically a panel that is um, has a light in it that shines through. So you can't really do that on colored envelopes, but if you have um, white or very light colored envelopes, you can actually shine the guidelines through and you'll be able to see them. So you don't have to use a laser or draw out guidelines or anything like that. So that's another really popular tool that some folks like to use. Um, so then for these, I don't need quite as much space. So I just use these lines as guidelines. And since we don't have to center as well, you can kind of start the first line wherever you want, which is really fun. <laughs> just a little bit faster. Although I write a lot slower in this, uh, in print style than I do in calligraphy. And of course, we're going with a gardening name because that's always what I do. Um, my laser, here we go. And then, so if you do have folks that are in different countries, um, you just need to format that correctly on your list. So what I asked for, we'll link my address template below. You can actually download that and see it. Um, but what I like to ask for is, um, that each, anything that's going on a different line is in a different column of the Excel sheet. And so that helps me to uh, format them correctly so that if I don't really know, you know, how addresses are formatted in Croatia, for instance, they just put each different line in a different column and I know um, how to write that out. So let me do the zip code as the same. Um, you can always do fun things with the zip code, like putting these little, Dots. I think they're really cute sometimes. Uh, you can make it really giant. The zip code is honestly going to be the most important part. So we like to make that as legible and as simple as possible because that is the part that's going to get it to Topeka. And then from there, um, they can look at it a little bit more closely to get it to the exact address if they need to. So we like to keep the numbers really consistent and simple. So another thing I love about this layout is just that it leaves so much room for stamps. Um, you can play around. You can put, um, you know, if they have last names, you can put them on the same line. You can put them on different lines, depending on how long people's names are. You can really do whatever you want in this format. Um, it's a little bit less formal, of course, but as long as they're okay with that, um, then you have a lot of freedom here, and it takes a little bit less time and a little bit less uh, you know, planning out of the exact envelope you're going to use. Then I'll just do a little um, mix and match kind of style for our last one. I'm going to center again, so I put them in between here. And we have a whole blog on addressing etiquette if you're curious about that. Um, if you have any specific questions, I'm happy to answer them in the comments as well. Um, but for the most part, it's just all about keeping it consistent with everything else. So if you have a very formal wedding, you're probably going to want to keep your addressing a little bit more formal, which might, you know, which includes titles, Mr. and Mrs. Um, you want to put your the children's names on the lower, on a second line, things like that. Whereas if you are doing, um, if you have a less formal wedding, you have a little bit more freedom to kind of mix it up. Um, you can use that plus sign that I really like to use. You can skip titles, you can use first names. Um, do things a little bit more, a little bit more fun, although a little bit less uh, formal. So this one's kind of a mix and match. And sometimes I even, when I'm doing print writing, sometimes I even start in the middle and work my way out. And what you can do if you're doing that is when you print out your list, 
just fold your addresses in half and then you'll have a line right on the middle so you can see exactly where that uh, midpoint is. I have a lot of fake addresses that live on Petunia Path because I just think that's kind of fun. <laughs> and I mentioned that I would uh, show you how the flourishes can help you out. So let me think of a um, let me think of a good date to use. Okay, so we'll do like Kissimmee is where my aunt it's always when I'm trying to think of addresses that I can't think of anywhere in the entire country um we'll do Kissimmee Florida oh I had a little trip there I must have something in my nib and of course this happens we talked on our process list video about making sure you get extras we require um we require 15% extras if they're providing envelopes, or if we're providing envelopes, we always order 15 or 20% extra <laughs> for this reason. So as you can see, um, this kind of off-centered a little bit. My A comes out way further to the right than my K does to the left. So what you can do here is always like add a fun little flourish. You could even add something like this if you want it to be simpler. Um, so every once in a while, you know, we'll need to do something like that, or if we needed to fix it on this end, we could just bring this up a little bit more. So you want to keep it consistent with your style, uh, but there are some ways that you can do that on the end, um, if you do have something that's a little bit off-center. And then, again, we'll just do the zip code in that same way, where we kind of start with the middle one and then go towards the edges and then work in. And I showed you um, a bunch of our no more boring envelopes. So there's a lot of things you can do um, that are still gonna be perfectly fine to mail. And again, this will kind of depend on your local post offices. Um, you may have to pay surcharges. Sometimes with vellum envelopes, they require a surcharge because the machines have trouble reading them. Um, but anything like these things are both perfectly mailable. There's nothing wrong with mailing these guys. I put uh, confetti in these guys all the time and mail them to people. Um, you can again put the stamp wherever you want. There's no rule that it has to be exactly in the top corner. Um, you can even, you know, cover with this whole design and it'll still print perfectly or still mail perfectly. So there's really not a lot of rules there. If you actually click on the USPS website, there are a lot of rules <laughs> listed. Uh, but for the most part, you can do whatever you want as long as you have postage clearly visible towards the top right of this side. Um, and then you have mostly the address portion. The names don't really have to be um, super legible. It does help slightly to get them addressed if you have last names. Um, every once in a while, we've had something come back because it didn't have a last name on it. But we've also had things with last names perfectly addressed. That have come back strangely. So, <laughs> Lainey, have you ever had issues with um, return addresses? Like, but do you usually put them on the back? And then, has the post office ever had issues with that? Um, yes. Yeah, so, I have literally never once put them here on the front of the envelope. And one time I had a client that um, did her return addresses herself on the flap, and she was told that some of them didn't get delivered for that reason because it was on the flap. However, the issue there is that you basically just want to make it completely indistinguishable from the real address. So the, your real address is going to take up the whole front. It's going to be giant. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be really obvious. Our return addresses, if you can see here, we put all the address information on two lines. So we keep the zip code up here. So we make it as small as possible. We put it very significantly towards the top of the flap as opposed to printing down here. Um, and then we even put the names over to the side just so that it makes a smaller footprint overall and doesn't look like it could be confused for this envelope. So this is the their reply envelope for the same thing. And we put the names up here and bigger. We centered it. 
we made it just a little bit more obvious that this is a mailing address as opposed to this one being a um, being a return address. So what you want is to just skip so that the um, the machines, if they happen to read this accidentally, think there's no way that it could possibly be the main address, that it has to be the return address. Um, and then in that case, they'll spit it out and the people will turn it over and read the address on this side. So um, it does say on the USPS website that you are supposed to have it on this side too. That being said, um, you know, I've mailed 50 suites of invitations at least and none of them have ever had it on this side. So, Interesting. Different. Good. So some people will do it like down the flap, which is trickier to print, but is also reasonable. Just anything that's gonna make the machine say, huh, this is not seeming right as a mailing address. And then they'll kick it back, flip it over and see the real mailing address. Gotcha. Yeah. So, and conversely, you wanna make this address stand out so that when they read it, they're like, there's no chance that it could be the return address. So that's why we start uh, towards the bottom because that's what they recommend for that. Um, and you know, the stamps are on here. So that helps as well. But we do make that a larger, uh, more statement piece. Yeah, so um, do you have any more questions, Becca, that you've received? I always just like to ask the, like what's the biggest screw up you've ever had with envelopes <laughs> or like what are the kind of the hard lessons that you've learned on them oh that's funny um, um i will say that uh the one i mentioned earlier where the client was doing their own return addresses that turned out to be um a little bit uh, just a little bit of a negative situation because i didn't set the right expectation for her that um square envelopes were going to be an additional surcharge and that she needed to, um, you know, do those things to make the return address seem more like a return address. So that kind of came back on me. So that's just all about um, that expectation for your clients. Um, so that when they get to the post office, they're not told, you know, that things are four times the cost. <laughs> um, but one thing that I've learned that um, I never really, I don't consider it too much of a screw up, but it has been a really helpful thing that I've done is when I'm doing an order for a client, I always keep a couple of their extra envelopes instead of sending them directly back to them. So I would say I've maybe done one order of envelopes that didn't come back and have a, a typo or a mistake, not necessarily on my part, but you know, some, one of the guests had provided the wrong address or moved or something was wrong on their list. And so um, in the past, they would have to then mail me one of their envelopes again for me to redo that one. Um, so now I just keep two to four, depending on how many extras they have and don't tell them. And whenever they, um, you know, when they come back and say, hey, we have two that had to be redone, like, how do we handle this? Then I think, you know, I predicted this. I actually have two of your leftovers here if you want me to go ahead and do those. So that's been a really um, helpful thing. It makes me look like a genius whenever it happens. <laughs> and if it doesn't happen, then, you know, I just keep those two extras and they never miss them. So um, that's kind of, yeah, so that's been really, really helpful. And also just for everyone listening, make sure you charge a setup fee and to redo those envelopes if you have to redo one or two because you still have to get out all your stuff and maybe make your markings again and re-warm up and all of that stuff. So make sure you charge accordingly. Cool. And we could get into a whole nother topic about pricing and how to charge for these, yeah. but I think that's, <laughs> that's for another day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so do you want to flip your camera back over onto your face and then we can kind of chat a little bit less me at your hands? <laughs> Um, so we have a couple resources that um, I'll make sure to link below. One is um, an addressing etiquette guide. So just talks about um, who gets an invitation, how you address to different types of couples, how you involve children, all that kind of stuff. Um, we have one about mailing invitations and what like kind of mistakes with the post office. So we did cover some of those, but there's a little bit more information about hand canceling and things like that um, on there. And then also our invitation design guide, um, which we'll link as well, talks about 
all of this and planning out the design of your invitation with the context of your envelopes um, and what elements you can use and pull and what, what makes things, I don't know, how it all kind of fits together in a cohesive piece with the envelope. So we'll, link, awesome. we'll make sure we link. Yeah, and uh, and if you're just looking for inspiration, just go on Instagram and look up <laughs> hashtag no more boring envelopes. <laughs> I yeah. love it. Well, thank you so much, Lainey, for the for the lesson and for all of those resources. I'm sure it'll really help people. Um, what are the best places people can find you? Yeah, so we're very very active on Instagram. Um, I have my own YouTube channel. Find me there. Um, and at designbylaney.com, of course. Awesome. I love it. Well, thanks again so much, Laney, and uh, I'll let you go for now. Okay, thanks. Have a great one. You too. Bye.